transformation in the coordinate plane and congruence. This is lesson 4.1b. That tells us there's a 4.1a. And you can go to the description, click on the geometry playlist, and find it if you missed it. So representing transformations in the coordinate plane, we have a bunch of transformations and we have coordinate mapping and description. So a translation is a slide. So our xy would map to x plus a and y plus b. And the translation a units horizontally and B units vertically. We have a reflection, that's a flip. Our XY would map to negative XY, and that would be a reflection across the Y axis. And our XY could map to X negative Y, that would be a reflection across the X axis. We have rotations, those are turns. Our XY would map to Y negative X, that would be a rotation about 0, 0, the origin, in a 90 degree clockwise direction. We could have xy maps to negative y, x. That's a rotation about 0, 0, the origin, 90 degrees counterclockwise. And we can have xy map as negative x, negative y, which would be a rotation about 0, 0, the origin, 180 degrees. Then we have dilations. That's growing or shrinking of the figure. Our xy would map to kx, ky. And k is larger than 0, it's greater than 0 and dilation with scale factor k and center 0, 0 on that origin. So if you notice the kx, ky, that's multiplication. That's the only one that has multiplication. An isometry is a transformation that preserves length, angle measure, and area. And because of these properties, an isometry makes an image that is congruent to the pre-image. A rigid transformation is another name for an isometry. So here we have transformations and congruence. Translations, reflections, and rotations make images that are congruent to their pre-images, to their original. They can be called congruence transformations. That's translations, reflections, and rotations. On the other hand, dilations with a scale factor k is not equal to 1 make images that are not congruent to their pre-image. So if k was equal to 1, we would have xy maps to 1x, 1y. Well, then the x and y would stay the same. So that would be congruent. So a dilation, that w and it wouldn't be a dilation. So k is not equal to 1. So if k was 2, we'd have 2x, 2y. They'd be multiplied by 2. If we had negative 3, we'd have negative 3x, negative 3y. They'd be multiplied by negative 3. See? And then it would be a dilation. They would not be congruent. We can determine whether some figures are congruent by determining what type of transformation or transformations can be used for one figure to make the other figure. And we can determine whether the polygons with the given vertices are congruent. So we have triangle ABC, and you can see its ordered pairs there, and we have triangle PQR and its ordered pairs. And you can see it in the coordinate graph. The triangles are congruent because triangle ABC can be mapped to triangle PQR by a translation. xy maps to x minus 5, y plus 1. And if you look at my little triangle here, we can take this triangle and we can just slide it, translate it to here. See? That's a translation. Now we have triangle ABC and triangle PQR. And the triangles are not congruent because triangle ABC can be mapped to triangle PQR by a dilation with a scale factor that K is not equal to 1. So in this case, if you look at maps, that K is 1.5. So it grew one times 1.5. It multiplied. See? 1.5 is the what K equals. All right? So that was a dilation. They're not congruent. They're two different sizes, aren't they? And we can prove two figures are congruent by showing there are one or more translations, reflections, rotations that map one figure to the other. And we can prove that the polygon with the given vertices are congruent. So here we have triangle ABC and PQR. We have their ordered pairs. We graph the triangles according to these ordered pairs. And there's no apparent single transformation that maps triangle ABC to triangle PQR. We look for a combination 
of congruence transformations that map triangle ABC to triangle PQR. So there's more than one transformation. The triangles are congruent because triangle ABC can be mapped to A prime, B prime, C prime by a translation. We would do X minus 1, Y minus 4 to these ordered pairs. So we've got ABC translates to A prime, B prime, C prime. So this little triangle would just translate and slide down just like that. See? It's not going perfect. All right? Then from A prime, B prime, C prime, it can be mapped to triangle PQR by a rotation. We would do, it would map to Y negative X. So these swapped places and the X became a negative and that's a 90 degree clockwise rotation. So from the translation, A prime, B prime, C prime, it rotated and went here. See? So if a drawing isn't given, just make one. It might help you visualize what you need to do. And adding or subtracting from coordinates will make a change in position, not a change in size. A change in size occurs when a coordinate is multiplied by a number other than 1 or negative 1. Then it would be a dilation, wouldn't it? It changed in size. Our next lesson is triangle classification by angle measure or side length. That'll be 4.2a. So I hope you're doing well. I'm proud of everybody who watches math videos on YouTube. It says a lot about your character that you're trying to improve yourself. And I hope you have a great day. And hit the like button if you can for me. That'll help me out. Bye.